Hello viewers, I welcome you all once again to our online tutorials. Today we'll be answering questions on integrated science and these are from SSCE 2000, the year 2000 and this will be the part one, part one. All right, so let's quickly go into these questions and answer the questions. All right, so the question is, gaping is practiced in yam production in order to, so you need to know what gaping is. So what is gaping? So gaping is like mulching, which is a layer of material that is what applied to the surface of soil. So it's a material that is applied to the surface of soil. What does it do? Or what is the purpose of gaping? Or what is the purpose of mulching? One, it insulates the soil, helping to provide a buffer from heat and cold temperatures. So it buffers what? Heat and not cold temperatures. So what it literally means is that it prevents high temperatures and it prevents very cold temperatures. So it helps us to obtain an optimal what? temperature and optimal temperature so that is what a uh, gaping or mulching does it again it retains water helping to keep the root moist so it doesn't help it doesn't allow water to escape into the atmosphere it retains it it keeps it it conserves water for the roots for the roots all right again it keeps weeds out to prevent what root competition you know uh, wheat also uh, takes in uh, nutrient and other stuff from the soil so now what gaping or what mulching does is that it actually keeps these weeds out it keeps them out to prevent what root competition again it pre uh, it prevents soil what compaction so it doesn't make the soil very, very what compact. You know, when the soil is very compact, it kind of uh, hinders what growth. It hinders growth. So what it therefore, what it means is that gaping at the early or at the time of planting, it is practiced to protect the tuber from being damaged by excessive what heating during dry weather. So that should be your answer answer here should be what should be b it reduce soil temperature in yam modes that is what gaping is doing or that is the function or that is the reason why we practice gaping at the early time of what planting all right so let's move to the next question what do we have they say it is not advisable to cover a glass bottle containing sodium hydroxide with glass stopper with glass stopper why why first of all it is unwise to put sodium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide you, you know sodium hydroxide is what is an alkali so it is not wise to put alkaline solution in a glass bottle with a glass stopper without greasing the stopper with a little petroleum with jelly why because alkaline can react with carbon dioxide in the air producing carbonate crust which may block the stopper so what it means is that when you put the stopper on it which is like like a lid on it because of the carbon dioxide coming from the outside it will interact or it will react with the alkaline what solution which is in the bottle creating what a crust or a carbonate what crust creating a carbonate crust and that will prevent the stopper from being removed from the bottle so what it therefore means is that the stopper will be stuck so the stopper will get what stuck in the bottle or on top of the bottle of course so that is why it is not advisable to cover what a glass bottle containing hydroxide with a glass stopper so here your answer should be what should be c it should be c so let's move on so they said when detecting 
the order of a substance, it is not advisable to bring the substance or to bring substances very close to the nose. Very close to the nose. Why? Because these substances or some chemicals are what? Are poisonous. Are poisonous. So whenever you are in the laboratory and uh, and you are to take a sniff or a direct sniff of chemicals that you are using, you run the risk of damaging your mucous membranes or your lungs because some of these gases are what are poisonous. So when it is very necessary to smell some of these gases in the lab or some of these chemicals in the lab, the proper technique is to be what is to be used. And that is what cup your hand above the container and gently move the air towards what your face. What it literally means that you can use your left hand to hold the test tube or the bottle, whatever it is, that the substance is inside. Then you use your right hand just at the top of the of the bot the opening of the bottle. Then gradually flip over it. You see, uh, the there are gases, chemicals are also what they they, they are some are uh, volatile, so it comes out. So you just gradually push it because it will be in the air. So you gradually push the air towards your what your face, and you can smell the gas unless, of course you have a very bad olfactory nerve like my own whereby even uh, 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 in the middle of a very toxic gas i can't even hear anything unfortunately so my olfactory nerve are not that good unless your own is like mine whereby you cannot so you want to really really bring it close to your nose but again because of the harmful substances that they contain or the poisonous substance they contain they can damage your lungs and they can damage your what your mucous membrane so here your answer should be what it should be b b all right so when diluting concentrated uh, tetraoxo sulfate six acid it is advisable to add the acid slowly to the water while stirring continuously why 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 do you do that so first of all you must understand that large amount of heat hmm, is released when strong acid such as what tetraoxosulfate six acid are mixed with water so adding more acid releases more heat so much heat is released that the solution may boil very violently splashing concentrated what acid out of the container and that means that the acid and the water mixture can explode it can explode so what then do you do so usually we put water slowly so we put the acid slowly to the what to the water and not the other way around if you put water to acid hey that be that's very very what dangerous very very dangerous so you put the acid inside the water but do it what slowly and gently stirring it what continuously so over here your answer is what should be b the acid and water mixture can explode why because large amount of heat is what is produced when strong acid are mixed with water all right so what do we have we have a body of mass 2 kg floats on water if the density of the water is uh, 1000 kg uh, meter cube calculate calculate the volume of the immersed of the body immersed so now you want to look for what for the volume you've been given mass you'll be given what density find the volume find the volume so how do we calculate that so first of all you write your parameters always write your parameters so your parameters you have the mass which is what 2 kg you have your density which is what 1000 kilogram uh, per meter quip you have your volume to be what unknown unknown so now we want to find out what uh, the volume but then we all know that density is equal to what mass over volume mass over volume so let's make volume the subject 
make volume the subject. This means that the volume is equal to what? Mass over density. Mass over. Don't forget. So if you do your uh, mathematics, that is it. You have. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a uh, V the subject, this will definitely what come here and this will come down. Basically, that's just it. So mass over what? Density. And you have the mass to be what? Two. And the density to be what? One thousand. So two. This simply means that 2 times 10 to the power what? Negative 3. Negative 3. Of course, you bring your what? Your unit, which is what? Meters per what? Creep. Meters per creep. So your answer here should be what? Uh, should be A. Your answer here should be A. Should be A. All right. Again, another calculation question. They said the frequency of a sound of a sound wave is what 20 hertz if it has a wavelength of 0 0.4 meters calculate the speed calculate the speed speed is the same as what velocity speed is the same as velocity so again write your parameters write your parameters so frequency is what 20 hertz uh wavelength is what 0 0.4 uh, meters whilst your velocity is what is unknown so we want to find what velocity so what is the relationship what is the relationship over here? So here, you must know that velocity is equal to what? Frequency times wavelength. Frequency times wavelength. And your frequency is what? 20. Your wavelength is what? 0 0.4. Do the multiplication. Your answer should be what? 8.0 meters per second. 8.0 meters per second. So your answer here is what? Don't forget, it's the same as speed. Like I said, velocity is the same as what? It's speed. Just that... Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So eight point what zero. So your answer here should be what should be D. Should be D. All right. So which of the following material is magnetic? Magnetic. What it means is that which of the following materials can be attracted by what by a magnet? That is just a question. So what is a magnet? A magnet is any substance that attracts certain types of what materials known as magnetic what substances so over here we're looking for what a magnetic substance in this what option or in this uh yeah in these options example of magnetic substances include what ion cobalt nickel and steel can you find any of them here of course yes your answer is what is nickel so nickel is what it's a magnetic what substance which means that it is what magnetic all right so these can be made into what magnet yes so what are the non-magnetic substances so these substances cannot be attracted by magnet examples are paper wood glass aluminium sodium gold salt copper water name them name them so as many as you can name them these are what substances that cannot be attracted by magnet and they are called what non-magnetic substances and substances that can be attracted by magnet they are called what magnetic substances so over here your answer is what is d all right so we have a block and tackle poly system has three fixed police and two moving ones so we have three that are fixed and then two that are moving determine the velocity what ratio of the system so you just have to know that velocity ratio is equal to what the total number of what pulleys whether it is fixed or it is moving so over here we have fixed to be three and we have moving to be what two together we have what five so the total number of what pulleys gives you what the velocity what ratio therefore your answer is five so here is what c all right what is the si unit of work the si unit of work is of course you already know it is what it is joules so basically the si unit of work is what joules the si unit for electric current is what ampere or a the SI unit of force is what Newton or what N. The SI unit of what power is what watts or W. 
W. So your, here, your answer should be what? Should be B. Should be B. All right. What do we have? An athlete of mass 60 kg runs at a velocity of what? Eight uh, meters per second. Calculate the kinetic energy. Calculate the kinetic energy. Once again, write your what? Your parameters. You have your mass to be what? 60 kg and you have your velocity to be what? To be V. But you don't know your what? Your kinetic energy. So how do we calculate kinetic energy? So kinetic energy is equal to what? Half times the mass times the velocity to the power what? Two. Or the velocity what? Square. So half times mass times velocity what? Square. Which means that half times 60, that is the mass, all right? Multiply by the velocity, velocity is what is eight. So velocity what square, which means eight times eight. And your answer here should be what? 1.92 times 10 to the power what? Three joules, of course. So 1.92 times 10 to the power what? Three joules, kinetic energy. So here your answer is what? Uh, no, your answer should be B. Your answer is B, not D. Your answer is B. I repeat, your answer is B, not D. All right. Okay, so guys, so this is a very short version of what we'll be doing in subsequent what videos. If you are new to the channel, kindly subscribe to it and give us a thumbs up if you really enjoyed the video. And if you want a one-on-one -on -one tutorials with us, please, there will be a link in the description kindly follow it or contact us personally. I'll put the link in the description. Contact us and let's have that kind of one-on-one -on -one tutorials. We know it's not easy, but with God, all things are possible.